Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we're going to be talking about some eyeshadow palettes and whether I would repurchase them if I lost them or if these were to be released today. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is an ongoing series on the channel. I do this once a month where I select 10 eyeshadow palettes from my makeup collection and I asked myself the question whether these were worth it in the end, you could say. Would I, if I lost these, if I had to start my makeup collection all over and these were still available, would I still make the decision to put my money towards them? So were they worth it in the end? Let's discuss. To my surprise, apparently I haven't featured this one yet. Part of me thinks I did, but it, they weren't on the list. I have a little running list that I write everything down that I feature in this video. And it's the Nabla Soul Blooming. Really stunning spring palette. I still love it till this day. It's sadly discontinued. If any of these aren't discontinued, I'll pop some links in the description box down below and I'll have some links to review. So if you wanna see looks I did with these or if you wanna see swatches, I've got you covered. So here we go with the Nabla Soul Blooming. I think this is a stunning looking palette. Really beautiful. We get some peachy tones, which aren't my favorite shades, but there's just something about how the looks I do with this come together that just makes it instant spring. Um, mainly because of these like three periwinkle shades. Um, these two are like multi-chromey, duochromey kind of things. And it was like duochromes before duochromes were ever hyped up. So I feel they're a bit more subtle, but they do work really well. I really enjoy this like copper bronze thing that is in here, but one of my go-to looks with this as actually to put this in the crease, this all over the lid, using this as liner, and this like bluish periwinkle purple kind of shade. When you put it over the peach, it looks more purple, which is why I think it works for me. And then you know, like putting this a little bit in the middle of my lid, and then perhaps this on the lower lash line. So I sort of have like a basic look that I always do whenever I reach for this palette but I just think it's really stunning. I haven't seen any brand do anything like this ever since. So if I lost this and if I had to start over again and I could still purchase this, I definitely would because this has truly stood the test of time in my makeup collection and it's one I rave about. I go back to it once or twice a year. I keep using this because I just love the color story so, so much. I also have some bigger things. Again, sadly, something you can no longer purchase because the brand can no longer source the pigments, but this is the Blend Bunny Surge. And Surge is so far one of my favorite Blend Bunny palettes that I've tried because of the color story, because of the quality that's in here. But I have had some issues with other palettes I've tried by them. Not sure if it's this month, maybe next month. I don't remember exactly, but I did buy the Longing palette and fingers crossed that that is going to be like my new favorite Blend Bunny palette because I do appreciate the brand. I think they do wonderful things, but for me, there's always just something missing. And what's missing in this one is another row of shimmers. That's just what I would have, would have wanted, however, it does have pastels, it has like saturated bright colors, really nice deep colors, a full row of shimmers, and then a full row of neons. And that makes this Blend Bunny palette in my collection a little bit more special compared to other colorful palettes I have. I don't love full rainbow palettes, it just, rainbow colors just don't really suit me. I always end up doing like sunset eyes when I use a rainbow palette, so I always come to the same look. But I feel with this, because it has like those different things of like the really dark versus the really bright and then really light, I love the contrast you can get with this and that's why I really enjoy it. So I would definitely repurchase this if I could still get it um, because it is now one of the very few colorful palettes in my makeup collection that I feel like if I wanna reach for a colorful palette, this would be top of mind. So for me, this was a really good purchase. It was the first time I bought from the brand together with the dollhouse. That one wasn't perfect, but this one, the longer I have it and the more I play with it, the more I like it. And then I thought I could do some like themed palettes. Uh, again, one I was like, but I had already shown you guys this, right? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Uh, it wasn't on the list, so I'm sure that this guy, the Beetlejuice collab from Melt from a couple years ago, the Waiting Room palette, 
Um, I just thought it could be nice because the movie is coming out, the second one. Um, I, I can't wait to watch it. So uh, I'm probably going to wait for it to come to streaming, though. I'm not big on, like, I'm not a big movie goer. Um, but yeah, The Waiting Room Palette was released a couple years ago together with Meld. I wish Meld had a tie-in collection with them again. That would have been so fun for them, I think. And this is a wonderful palette. I think this is very stunning. You get the grays, you get the reds. And at the time I bought this, this was very different for me. I didn't have anything else like this in my collection. But at this point, it's making its way to, its, to my makeup memory box. I like to keep the box with the packaging because I just really enjoy it. Because I now have other palettes that have these kind of reds and burgundy tones in that this has that I feel I don't necessarily need to keep this one around to create the kind of looks that I would want to make with this. I bought the Glam Light Chucky. That has been a great replacement, so I don't need to keep it. But I just wanted to feature it here because I was like, when I'm filming this, the movie is about to be released. And I think the day this video goes live is the first weekend that it is released. So I think that's a great one. I, I think Beetlejuice is a really fun movie, like the first one. I think I've only seen it like once or twice. I don't remember much of it. It's been years since I watched it. So I'm definitely going to have to do like a little Beetlejuice marathon if and when it comes to streaming. Speaking of the sort of Halloween, pre-Halloween preparations we're seeing, I have my Haunted Europe here from Nomad. Again, one that I was surprised I hadn't featured before. And this has come back. It is limited quantities though, but you can get it. They've also re-released the Ghost Town USA palette. So if you were interested in this, you can now buy them as a bundle. And what I saw on their Instagram is that they're doing shipping from within the EU. So I know some people have been telling me in the comments that they haven't purchased from them because they think it's going to be too expensive. But if this brand is now shipping from within Europe, you would not be hit with any additional shipping fees if you are in the EU. If you're in the UK, it may be different. I don't know how that works. And this is such a good fall palette. I mean, you get your pumpkin patch things, but you also get your gloomy fall foliage kind of things. You know what I mean? It just has all the fall shades you could possibly want. If I lost this and it was still available, I would definitely be picking it up. This is going to be the last time they're restocking though. Just saying, so if you missed out, you were still hoping to get it, now may be a good time. Next up is a Juvia's Place palette. I have decluttered most of these little six pans that I used to have. I had four of them. I decided to keep this because it has a really beautiful shade in. This is called the Mauves. It is a full on mauve toned, rosy toned palette. And I love this mauve tone in the middle. That shimmer is really lovely. It's like a pink to green kind of shift. And I don't have quite a lot of shades that do this exact shift. So that's why this palette gets to stay. It has some lovely mattes. And this is actually one of the better mauve tone palettes in my collection for sure. Do I feel that I would miss this though if I lost it or if somehow I had to start over with my entire eyeshadow palette collection? I don't think I would miss this because I have so many other rosy tone palettes that I would reach for for this before I ever even thought of this one. So that one shimmer, maybe I should just depot it, take it out, put it with my singles collection and declutter the rest of the palette because I think I have mattes like this in other palettes. I just do. So this one, bit on the fence because I do like how small it is. So I don't mind keeping it around because it doesn't take up a lot of space, but yeah, it's not my favorite palette in my collection. I'm also slowly making my way in these videos through my Kaleidos Futurism palettes. This is the Lunar Lavender. This is the Futurism number, number six. And this is indeed a lavender palette, which when I bought it, it was very different in my collection. That's why I picked it up. But I think because I have the lavish palette now from ColourPop, I think if I'm thinking lavender, lilac sort of shades, I might want to pick that up. I also have quite a few singles that can do this. I'm not sure if I need to keep it around as a palette. However, I do really enjoy these shades on myself. So that's why I feel it still has merit. Would I miss it though? If I lost this, would it be the first thing I would go out to buy if I lost my makeup collection? And I had to start over. Not at all. This is not top of mind. In fact, the reason why you're seeing so many of my Juvia's Place and Kaleidos palettes in these videos is because they live in the same cubby in my makeup drawer. 
and I just feel I kind of forget about them. <laughs> so that's why I'm like doing these videos as well to help myself to remember what's actually in there and like, oh yeah, I do really like that. I think I really like the look of it. Would I buy it again? Probably not. But this one just needs to go onto a list for like the winter time because these like really soft purples, like if it's like February, March, like spring, winter going into springtime, I think these are really pretty shades. Some more small things then, and these count as one for me because I tend to only ever buy them, like use them together, and that's how I bought them. So even though it's two palettes, I feel they count as one. And it's my Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows, which nobody loved apart from me, it seems. This is Smoky. And then we have Cool Neutrals, which is it cool and is it neutral? I think that's debatable, but together... They make for a really pretty like little overview of cooler toned eyeshadows. Um, the pinks in here I feel are very warm and the two pinks we get, these two, are just super similar. So I just think this could have done more. The formula is more of a satin rather than a really full on pigmented kind of thing. I like these, but were these must haves in my collection? Again, no, I would not repurchase this I think. I definitely think that these are, like, I just wanted to try the brand um, and these came out and I like these color stories and I definitely think there is merit in these. Like, they're small, you can, like, snap them together. So if you're traveling a lot, they're very cleverly made. But I can also understand why a lot of people didn't like these. It's not, like, very impressive eyeshadow. It's a good eyeshadow. It's very workable, very easy to blend. That's what I'm personally looking for. But this wasn't wowing me. And therefore, I don't think I would ever really miss these if I lost them or anything like that. I would definitely not prioritize getting any more snap shadows. It's why I only have these two, because I just wanted to try the brand, and I've never bought a single eyeshadow from Fenty since. And I think my final mini palette from Natasha Denona that I have not yet featured in these videos, it's the mini Zendo. And this, I think it's so, so stunning, but a bit like with the Fenty Beauty, did I need this? No, but I just really like the look of this color story and it's a bit different for me. It has these like warmer tones. I really like this gray green in the middle and the purple and then this is great for blending. So I can definitely do very distinct look with it, looks with this and I think I can, uh, it has the Natasha Denona quality that I enjoy. So I knew this was gonna be good eyeshadow, but is this one that I'm going to miss really heavily if, I ever misplaced this and I lost it somehow. I mean, I would be sad because it's a Natasha Denona palette, but I would miss my I Need a Nude a hundred million times over before I ever miss this one. So this is not a priority of something that I would want to repurchase at all. I actually feel like I'm a bit snarky in this one because I feel similarly about the Dior. Again, this was, I think, the first Dior eyeshadow that I had bought in like five or six years when this launched. It's from the Christmas collection a couple of years ago. It's called Black Knight. Here's what it looks like. And I think this looks stunning. It's dark, it's grungy. There's a bit of shimmer there, but not too much. And Dior has really wonderful eyeshadow quality. I really like it. I think I picked this up around the time that they started getting a little bit of hype for some of their five pans. Like there were, there were some like rumors in the air of like, oh, Dior does do some good eyeshadow. And I feel that Dior has really put itself back on the map. And I think this was one of the things they did a couple of years ago that really had people do a double take. Like, is that Dior? So I like this. I think it's really pretty. I think this looks stunning. It's really well made. The burgundy in the middle makes the palette. Do I wear this a lot? No. Is it great for a smoky eye? Yes. How often do I wear smoky eyes? Hardly ever. <laughs> so was this again necessary to have in my makeup collection? No, but I remember that Christmas, I was like, I wanna treat myself. And so I bought this. I think I actually had a discount voucher. Like whenever you have enough points, they send you like a voucher. And then I think they had like 20% off of everything in the store and that's usually when I buy these things. I don't buy Dior unless I can get, like, get a deal. 
Um, and then I have this guy, the Prelude Chroma from Lime Crime, which I think is my final Lime Crime palette to feature in one of these videos. And this is beautiful. It's, I think, one of the oldest palettes in my collection that has these kind of teal shades in. But is this wholly unique in my collection anymore? No. Um, I do really like this shade here because it looks white or perhaps a bit baby blue in the pan, but it has a green flip. It's a white to green, which is really lovely. Whenever I use this, I always use these two. I use this. I use this to blend things out. I ignore these two, and then I always use the purple as liner. Um, so is it a beautiful palette? Yes. Is it a must-have? No. None of these eight pans from Lime Crime I feel are anymore in my collection. Like, they're nice, they're good. I want to keep them around. I want to get more use out of them for sure. But I wouldn't prioritize buying this again. There are so many other brands that do these kind of shades now. This was very different at the time it was released, but I just feel that as time progresses and other brands start doing other things, we can get quite a few similar things. I just really still like the packaging of this. It's like, you know, Venus, but she has like passed out or something like that. So I do really appreciate the packaging, but this eyeshadow palette is not something I would want to repurchase again. Those were 10 eyeshadow palettes that I wanted to feature in this video today. Thank you so very much for joining me. I really hope you had a good time watching this video. Um, I definitely had a good time filming it, so thank you so very, very much for joining me. I make several videos every single week, so if you subscribe to the channel, you will know exactly when I post new videos. So I hope you could do that for me. Thumbs it up in the meantime, and then I hope you have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.